This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we're talking about this time of year, there's all kinds of codes and getting your pool ready that we want to talk about. Sunsets on the River at the Hermitage Museum and Gardens, the fourth annual conference for girls and young women at ODU, and yes, they do rule the world. Healthy Norfolk, a new initiative with community programs and partners, and you're going to want to know all kinds of new stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. Yes, it is springtime, early summer, which means people are kind of out there looking at maybe starting building that new addition, or they don't have a new addition, but the next door neighbor's house doesn't look quite right, or they have a pool. Take your pick. I got two people who can talk about all of that, plus a lot more. Uh, Sherry Johnson, Neighborhood Services Manager, Bureau of Neighborhood Quality. How you doing? Good. And Lynn Underwood, Code Official, Bureau of uh, Norfolk Quality. You actually take it from the very get-go. There's that vacant lot and somebody wants to put a house on it, right? That's correct, yes. We issue permits for construction of anything new and also any additions, remodeling, or anything like that on a house or okay. a building. What is the purpose of the permit? Is it to figure out what everybody's doing? Well, the purpose is not to figure out what everyone's doing. It's to basically preserve safety for the people who are going to be inside the building when it's finished. Okay, so when that buddy of yours comes over and says, yeah, I can do some wiring for you. Uh, you ought to be careful because uh, a lot of buddies and a lot of people that other people know uh, don't know all the things they need to do in order to provide a safe installation. Uh, you want to get a licensed contractor, you want to make sure it's someone who has experience and who is qualified to do that work. Okay, and then that way you can follow the process all the way through. Exactly. Okay, I, okay, I, I know everything there is to know, Glenn, about building a house because I watch HGTV. Good, okay. excellent. Is it, yes. Many those people those words scare you, don't they? Many people have that same experience. So yeah. I've got this floor plan, but they talk about things like, okay, a bedroom is only a bedroom if it has a closet. You, a, a bed, well, there's a whole bunch of rules about, uh -oh. a, about a house. There's we have four minutes, Lindsay. Several <laughs> different rules about a house, including uh, things like the size, the construction, the, the structural integrity, uh, the egress, uh, fire safety, all that sort of thing. So all of that is for real? Yes. Okay, so if you've got to bring your plans in, those are the kinds of things you're looking for. Correct. We look at plans and we verify everything is correct on the plans. We issue the permit and then we conduct inspections. Okay, you very casually made a comment about getting a contractor that's licensed. How do you know if a contractor's licensed? You have several ways of knowing. One is to contact the, the organization that regulates the contractors. That's the Department of uh, Professional Occupational Regulation, DPOR, with the state of Virginia. They have a website. Uh, we can give the website to the viewers right now, later. Uh, but the, the website, you can verify that if a contractor is licensed, what they're qualified to do in terms of work, and if they have had any complaints that have been filed against them. Okay, Sherry, i got to be frank with you. It's spring, early summer, and I'm thinking, ah, it's time for Sherry to be on the sofa to talk about tall grass and weeds and pools. Well, yes, So you're ready course. to talk about tall grass and weeds. What's a tall grass? Tall grass in the city of Norfolk is anything over 12 inches consistently in your yard. So that's pretty high. Okay, now you, you've got the, 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 the inspectors that work with you that will go around and look at established structures and mm -hmm. see if they're heading toward blight. Mm -hmm. But but before the inspector gets out there, what are the kinds of things that a neighbor can look out for? Well, one of the things, Bob, that we're experiencing, especially um, in our economy, is a lot of foreclosures. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to ask is for our citizens of Norfolk is to really look out for their neighbors. If they know the house next door or up the block has gone into foreclosure, to really keep a good eye on that. Um, many of the banks now that are taking over are taking responsibilities, and they have service companies that are maintaining those houses. So let us know when you call in, and you know, of course, to call the call center at 64, 664 6510 mm -hmm. um, and let us know what's going on in that house. But first and foremost is as a neighbor you should know what's going on with that house. What, what's happened? Well I know that the la last summer there was a story that actually made it to one of the other broadcast stations where the neighbors were keeping the front lawn kind of uh, mowed up on an empty house mm -hmm. but there was a tree coming out of the pool. Now that raises all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. I mean so what kinds of things should people look out for if, they've got, if they own a pool? Well, if, if you own a pool, one of the, the first things, if this is the first time you're getting one this year, is you want to make sure it, it's safe and that you want to make sure that it's clean 
all the time, not just when you're using it. Um, so one of the things that we have in the city of Norfolk are barrier requirements, um, and we're happy to talk to you about them, and you can call the call center, and, and they can hook you up with us. So that, that there actually does need to be a fence all around the yard, then? A fence, or the pool steps need to be removed. In the case of an above ground pool? Correct. Oh, okay. Um, and that's for the safety of not only your family and children, but other families and children and animals in the area. Um, and then the flip side of that is you got to keep it clean. You can't start the pool at the beginning of the year and then just let it go into mosquito breeding season. Ah, because then it becomes <laughs> a pool for other things other than swimming. Yes, you have to maintain it, actually. Well, Linda, does, does, when, you, when you bring in your floor, your plans for uh, new construction, tying it all together, and you're going to put a pool in later, is that something you really should be kind of planning ahead while you're Setting the house on the lot? It's a smart too? idea to plan ahead if you do intend to put a pool in. The trouble is most people don't think about it until much later because they're not thinking they can afford it at the initial construction of the house. So there's really nothing wrong with putting it in as long as everything meets the required setbacks for the pool, uh, for the construction of the pool, where you can dig. Uh, for example, you might be putting underground utilities mm -hmm. for the house itself, but if you can avoid that where the pool would be, you can put those, those uh, aspects in as you're building the house. Now, some parts of the city have special overlay districts or whatever, there might be historic districts, or how do you find out what those kind of rules are if you're getting ready to uh, either do an addition or something like that? You, you can research the details of each address, your particular address, or you can call our office and we can go through it with you. 664-6565 um, is a telephone number you can call. Okay. You can reach us, uh, and if you have any questions, our plans examiners or permit technicians can go over each of those details for your house. Because something that you said was very significant, kind of start planning ahead. Yep. So if you're thinking about building or adding that addition, it's best to do your homework right away. Absolutely. Okay. And if you're looking out after a neighbor's house that might be vacant, what's that number again that somebody can call to kind of find out more about? What's going on? Sure, 664-6510. And the call center can help you with um, any information that they have on the house as well as you give us information. Also, the other tool, Bob, you know that we always talk about is the Norfolk Air um, that we use on the website all the time where citizens can go and kind of self-serve and see what's going on. So just scroll down to the bottom right. of the website, look mm -hmm. for Norfolk Air, and that'll also tell you if you're in one of those districts or, or whatever. Thanks a lot for the, everything that you guys are doing to bring information to the residents so that we can have that neighborhood quality a lot more because okay. it does rest with you, the neighbor. When we come back, there's all kinds of cool stuff going on this time of year right here in Norfolk, so stay tuned. says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Maybe you should go to your shelter and get a mature dog who will make your blues disappear. How's that for tricks? I got picked. Wow. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Yes, there's awesome stuff going on in Norfolk, and of course, it's happening right at the Hermitage. Right, Megan Frost? That's right. There are some awesome sunsets over the Hermitage, and you're kind of capturing them? We utilize the sunsets for some evening go. concerts, yes. <laughs> Cause, okay, because let's, let's start from the very beginning. The Hermitage is not downtown under the glare of the lights. It's off right. of Hampton Boulevard, mm -hmm. tucked away. Exactly. In a really cool neighborhood. In a really cool neighborhood, but you have to have a reason to go to that really cool neighborhood if you don't live there. So yeah. that's why I started the Sunset Concerts. Now, okay, again, let's go even further back. The Hermitage hasn't always been a museum. It was someone's home. Right. Mm -hmm. It was the home of William and Florence Sloan, uh, but they officially opened as a museum in 1937. So They moved out. Nope, still lived what? there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still lived there. Oh, you're kidding. And opened their home to the public. So we're actually celebrating our 75th anniversary this year of being a um, private nonprofit museum. So my thought that they probably had some pretty cool parties on their lawn. Yes. 
Yes. Because they, they were they were well connected. I mean, they they were very instrumental in the cultural arts scene in Norfolk, but they also were very supportive of the military during mm -hmm. both world wars and we have amazing pictures if you come and visit of all of the servicemen out on that front lawn that we now use for mostly parking but great pictures of the servicemen in their uniform playing tug of war and all of these crazy uh, games and we have oh, one cool. amazing picture with Mrs. Sloan right in the middle of hundreds and hundreds of servicemen so we're not doing anything new they, the property is very used to having people on it and well I've got to ask you for those that haven't seen the house what type of architecture is that house? It is a mix. It's technically <laughs> arts and crafts mm -hmm. with a Tudor influence. That's so. a nice way of putting it. But mm -hmm. it is kind of eclectic looking. I mean, yes, and it was all hand built, hand carved by three wood carvers there on the property. Great. Mm -hmm. With a great built in organ. Yeah, an organ. Mm -hmm. We have a custom Steinway piano, hidden doorways and passages and all kinds of fun things. It's a great place to grow up, but there weren't any kids that grew up there, are there? Two sons. Oh, really? They did mm -hmm. have two sons? Yep, they had two sons. My crack research there didn't show that. <laughs> okay. They had two sons, but um, uh, there's no family really involved anymore. Okay. It's just, they set it up to be a, um, a museum. But they would definitely approve of the sunset. Most certainly, yes. Okay. They're parties? Yeah. They're, they're basically parties, but okay. people, bring, um, people bring their own picnics, and it's free for museum members, only $7 if you're not a member. And we have a cash bar, and lots of different bands come out, and it's very family-friendly. We do a little um, kids art project so that the kids are occupied while the parents can kind of socialize. Oh, okay. Yeah, they run around and have a really good time. Could there be a tug-of-war uh, challenge going on? <laughs> Maybe. Now that you've mentioned that, you know, that Maybe. could be kind of, But there's some great music, and I know uh, this week you've got hotcakes playing. Yes, right? we have the hotcakes. And these are on Thursday nights. Thursday nights. Every, Thursday, every other Thursday night, 6 to 9 in May and June. And so we have the hotcakes in May. Now, for those, of the, those that may not, that they're not pancakes, they are? They are hotcakes. They are, <laughs> they are a, a dance band, and I've been told that it's a very popular dance band. I was going to say, people, when you say hotcakes, it sounds like hotcakes. A lot of people are really excited about it, so that's going to be a good one. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you pre-test these bands? Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a mix. It's some that I find going out and seeing bands, um, and then others that contact me that are interested in playing. Because you've got uh, Lou Carmen coming up, mm -hmm. and he played at Riverfest. Yeah, he played at Riverfest. So he's a local and guy. He's a local guy, young local guy, um, acoustic singer-songwriter, so that'll be a really good night. So and it could be one of those, I saw him on the lawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of getting them before they hit big, maybe. All right. And then the same goes for the Green Boys. On That's on the 21st. The 21st. Right? And that will be the last one of the summer. And they're a bluegrass band from You're Richmond. already saying that with some disappointment. I it's it's got to end, but it's got to start. I'd run them all the time, but we're a small staff, so they, we got to take a break. All right. Now, are you, are you getting with the band, or are you getting with the kids? Oh, I'm, I'm I'm back there pouring beers, wine, you know, you just come see me. I'll sell you a membership. <laughs> well, let's talk about membership because, okay, it's $7 if you're not a member. Mm -hmm. But if you are a member, it's and free. how much is membership? It's $60 for a household. And what, for what? A household? Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for two adults and two children. Gets you in free to all of our exhibition openings, the museum, all the Friday night films that we'll have coming up in June, July, and August. All of those programs are free for members. And there's a lot of cool stuff going on when it comes to the shoreline mm -hmm. rebuilding. So there's a real sensitivity to, to the environment right. that the house is in. Yes, we have on both sides of the property, we've done um, extensive wetlands restoration projects. And we bring in school children so they can learn about the importance of the wetlands and clean river and all that good stuff. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the segment that you were not downtown among the lights of downtown. You were nestled in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Does that does that kind of bring some uh, opportunities? Well, it's, it's a great, beautiful neighborhood. We were just on the um, Norfolk Home and Garden Tour where the Hermitage was on the cover of the state oh, cool. guidebook. That's so right. being in that neighborhood really helped get some um, visibility for the museum. Yeah. And the neighbors of Oh, they're to, wonderful. They've gotten used to your Thursday night parties? They love it. They're the first people out there. <laughs> well, I was going to say, what do they say? <laughs> Invite your neighbors yeah, first? They just walk on over. So and do you have a message for the neighbors then? I would love to say thank you to the neighborhood of Lock Haven <laughs> because that was one of the things. You know, I wanted every household, 
every household in Lock Haven to be a member of the Hermitage. And, and I can say and feel welcome. most of them are. Yeah. Okay. So. On Thursday nights, May 24th, the Hotcakes, June 7th, Luke Hartman, and June 21st, the Green Boys, and that's their last name. Yes. Okay. Brothers. <laughs> Green, brothers. Green Brothers and some friends from Richmond, and they're very talented. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Megan, thanks for everything that you're doing to kind of bring the museum alive and keeping yes. it relevant today, even though it's got a tremendous history. 75 years. Yeah, 75 years. Awesome. Great. Thank you. When Thank we you. come back, yes, women do rule the world right from ODU. Stay tuned and find out what that means. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspective. I didn't mean to break uh, news by saying that women rule the world. I knew that because I raised two daughters. Where were you guys when I was doing that? <laughs> uh, Marie Ves Vesley? Beasley. Beasley and Katie Felder. You guys have the, con the Girls World of the World Strengthening Your Journey conference at ODU come uh, June 2nd. Tell me right. about it. Well, we're, uh, we're using the Web Center at, uh, at ODU and it's all day Saturday. It goes from where registration starts at about 8. We'll have a keynote speaker who's going to be Marion Jones, a former track star, Ooh. and who now uh, does a lot of work with youth, um, particularly around decision making, and talks to youth about when you, when you come to those moments in your life that, you, uh, that you've got to make big decisions, how do you do it well? Um, and she's using her own experience uh, oh, wow. to do that. There will be a continental breakfast. Uh, after that, there will be workshops for the girls. Um, it's for girls 10 to 18. Wait a minute. Ten, the most vulnerable ages you Absolutely. decided to put into the Web Center all at the same time? And it is wonderful. It's full of energy. We have terrific workshops. We separate the... Uh, by age, just because of the content of the workshops okay. is more appropriate for one age versus another. And, um, and then there's a box lunch. Um, there will be resource tables uh, from local businesses, local agencies, organizations. That, uh, so there are goodies and stuff to hand out. Everybody gets a T-shirt and a little backpack. And after lunch, we have Zumba. And well, everybody, and work off that everybody, everybody stands <laughs> up in the, in the front of the, <laughs> the web center and does Zumba. Cool. Okay, let me, I'm trying, I'm sitting here trying to work, who do I want to talk to and ask questions for? The parents or the 10 to 18 year old girl? And I think I'm going to shoot for the parent because right. I have this flashback of from 10 to 18, that journey. Mm -hmm. My 10 year olds loved me, thought the world of me. Then right. somebody took them but over. But not for long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, and that's then, not true. They then, still think the world of you, but it seems to disappear for a while. Well, and then about, about when they were about 17 or 18, I finally figured it out that they're going to be adults longer than they're going to be teenagers. Mm -hmm. And maybe right. if I treated them like that. Right. Well, we also... Um, Is that we, true? Uh, yes. Oh, good. Because they're now 30 and 27. So. We, uh, we actually have a parent uh, panel. Okay. As a part of this, because we really believe that the parents should come, and we try to have issues addressed there that are particularly are the kinds of issues you're talking about. Okay, well, here's one for you, uh, Katie. When, between the 10 and 18, when do they go from being a girl to being a young woman? We won't deal with the woman part. Okay. The young woman part. When do they make that transition? I wish there was a clear-cut answer to that. Because supposed to as be. a mother of two, <laughs> I would say you would like to think at 18, but I have to tell you that um, I'm sorry, Bob. 
they're going to be with you for a long time. Yeah. Probably until you take that last they will breath. Always they're going to yeah. Girl. And they will be. Um, but I think um, at that age, there's a little turn, that little winter of discontent that you explained, mm -hmm. that 14 to 16, where they seem like aliens have taken over their bodies. They come back. They really do. Um, what I have done with this conference every year is I make it a fun event with my two girls every year. The older one volunteers, the younger one's still taking the classes. Oh, okay. She's 14. Um, and as a parent, what is nice is that we're now looking at social media and how it's affecting our girls at that 14 to 18 year old age and some younger that are maybe having a Facebook pages and that kind of stuff. Because as a baby boomer myself, I can't wrap my brain around a lot of what's going on with technology. But then there are other parents like me. So that's what's so wonderful about the family symposium and things that we do for the mm. parents. Well, even with mine growing up, I didn't mind them talking on the phone forever because they were they could never get further than 10 feet away from the wall. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> that's as long as the cord was. Now. Now, that's right. And that's why that's such a critical issue. It is. And, and we've had, um, in the past, we've had people come and talk about, to the, actually to the girls, come and talk about the social media and some of the implications of sharing all of your information and how to be cautious. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that, uh, that uh, they're going to be talking about to the parents this time. And then we also, because of our keynote speaker, because we've got Marion Jones coming, we also have someone who's going to talk to parents about sports and character development and and how you can how you can really link those things and how it often is good to encourage children to girls in particular because they don't get as much encouragement to stay on teams or to try out i, I was going to say what is the kind of pressure to track that a teenage girl gets on now i mean what what is cool for a teenage girl cool as a mother of a 14 year old cool is knowing what to wear showing up with the right thing on. Um, cool is, do you have a Facebook? Can you Instagram? Do you have an iPhone? And I think as a role of a parent, you have to define what cool is um, at an early age with your children so they don't mm -hmm. become overwhelmed by what they see. Which means it's important, though, to kind of know what cool is. You have to, because we have to be able to um, disseminate a lot of the information that our the negative signals that our girls are receiving and if I could say one thing about this conference there is a sense of power in that room for young women I mean you leave like on this high like I can be anything I want to well, be. Well, I mean, if you've, if you've put in your promotion materials, girls rule the world, of course. <laughs> well, we're, uh, we always pick, it, it's, the, it's the journey part, which <laughs> I think you've talked about before. There's a right to rule. Which, mm -hmm. is, which is really, which is finding yourself and in, in your own power and knowing how to make those good decisions and how to move forward in life and, and to, to, think, to think about some of the issues that maybe you don't think about all the time. And you're more than your external. You're more than what you wear. That's right. You're more than where you go. You're more than where you live. There's something deep inside of you. We try to get them to discover that hidden treasure. Wow. Yeah. And that is the beginning journey toward health, which we're going to talk mm -hmm. about in the next segment. But right. is there a web page that they can go to to find out more? The, we the web page is www.odu.edu forward slash OA forward slash CDC. Now for the parents, what's the phone number? <laughs> I don't remember the phone number. I, think I, hope, it's, I hope it's we, scrolling. We've been so. scrolling the phone number. Thank you for everything that you guys are doing to invest really in our future and on that journey to health. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about health right here in Norfolk and how it pertains to you. It's always nice to come home, but many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. May is the beginning of a healthy community time right here in Norfolk, and you can play an important part, as Bon Secours has too. I've got uh, Lynn Siltanke. That's correct. Did I get it right? You did. That's the beginning. Director of Marketing for Bon Secours, or DePaul, who are you? 
I work uh, as the, <laughs> the corporate communications director for Bon Secours Hampton Roads in this community. Okay. DePaul is one of my uh, most favorite facilities. I was going to say, for the ones of us that go up and down Granby Street and exactly. use that hospital, that's DePaul. That is DePaul. And DePaul is undergoing a, a, a real renaissance uh, at that facility. If, if you drive by, you'll see uh, um, that we're getting ready to start a new medical building, and we've, Bon Secours has invested. Uh, $20 million in that facility in the last several years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let me kind of set it up because, uh, as m many of our viewers know, we got a new city manager a little over a year mm -hmm. ago who is a very young, vital guy who works out all the time. Mm -hmm. And he says, look, it's not just about working out, but we've got to be a healthy community. And we brought in a lot of our uh, corporate partners, you all being some of them, mm -hmm. around a table. And to be honest with you, you guys made it sound really easy. It's a matter of just kind of getting people talking about it, aware of it and then setting examples. And so this month we're starting with, it's as simple mm -hmm. as going for a walk. But you guys have taken it a little further, but you started off easy, didn't you? We did. Um, we started out with uh, creating awareness of health conditions. Uh, we are not immune to, uh, just because we're in healthcare doesn't mean that we're immune to uh, becoming ill. It doesn't mean that we're immune to having employees that have hypertension or diabetes and uh, that are obese. Okay, and so I can sit in my chair and say, I'm aware. Okay, you're okay. aware. So now we want so you to get out of your chair oh, okay. and uh, to do something about your eating, uh, to do something about your activity. We create awareness and um, opportunities to do that. And also to do things uh, such as if you're a smoker, we're offering smoking cessation. We have a smoke free campuses now. And we so have nicotine free hiring. Okay, now I quit smoking mm -hmm. and it became really easy about seven years ago. It became easy because I didn't know anybody that smoked anymore. So that environment really did help because. I was sneaking off to the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Diet, you're saying we got to do something about food? Um, one of our biggest challenges is portion control and eating the right foods. Ooh, I'm not going to tell you what I had for lunch before taping. Okay. I won't, no won't judging. No judging. Oh, uh, that's key is no judging, right? No, I just don't judge you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> how did you but, do that in the hospital? Uh, one of the things we've done is create um, more options as far as healthy eating in the in the cafeteria. Um, we did something radical. We took fryers out of our hospitals. No. Yes. We have baked French fries. And we have um, okay. healthier options, more salads. And um, if, as you come into many of our hospitals, you can flip over to the other side of it, and it'll tell you what the calorie count is, what your nutritional value is. So if you're going to do it, do it with full knowledge that you're not exactly. doing the right thing. Donuts? Do you still have donuts? Um, I don't recall seeing donuts there. Oh, People no. still are allowed to bring them in. Okay. <laughs> it's not. Because you had to do some in moderation, as though. an employer that were mm -hmm. kind of challenging mm -hmm. the establishment. I mean, the idea of saying not only will be a, a smoke free, but you're not hiring smokers either, right? That's correct. That's giving us an opportunity to live by example. We are good help to our community. We are. Um, that's part of our mission, and uh, we're. Uh, we're making it uh, true to our community by setting a good example. Does this mean you're not taking the elevator? Uh, we have a, a program about uh, encouraging <laughs> oh. people to take the stairs, yes. You can take the it's elevator. It's that simple, isn't it? It's more steps every day, paying attention to what you're eating, and being aware of your health conditions. Our employees right now are going through personal um, health assessments as part of their um, enrollment in, in our health, uh, health programs. There's a discount if you have a, your blood pressure checked, talk about your risks of different kinds of cancer, your risks to heart, um, to heart disease, to having a stroke. Um, we incentivize our employees and give them uh, less, less rates for their health yeah. insurance because we know when people have education and motivation, they're gonna have better outcomes. They're gonna be healthier and we're gonna be able to serve our community better. Lynn, it, I, I really appreciate coming to share the simple things that you all have mm -hmm. done because they're really things that it doesn't necessarily take an employer to do. But as an individual, I can consider some of the same mm -hmm. things. Plus, what you're doing is bad for your business. Did you realize that? You know, I think that there's going to be plenty of people who can use our help in a variety right of anyway. different things. So we'll, we'll be better off um, in our overall community if more of us will do this. We'll worry about ha having good or bad business later. There but our ministry go. is to take care of our community. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Lynn, for everything okay. you're doing. Thank to you bring, for having us. To bring in awareness. And let's kind of stay in touch and see how okay. we all do our journey down health. Okay, okay? sounds okay? great. Thanks. We'd like to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48. But more importantly, what are you doing to get healthy? Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you. And you.